So just to be clear, this is a mock draft that is based on what I would do if I were the GM of every team, and it is not what I think will happen. With that said, please be sure to like and subscribe as both would make massive differences. And let's get started. Bryce Young is going to be the pick at number one. And really, it comes down to two simple things. There's longer of a test run we can have with Bryce Young than there is for Justin Fields because Fields has already played two years in the NFL. Bryce Young is going to be very cheap for five years, not three years. And that's a big difference because this Bears team is not close to competing. And yeah, they have a ton of cap space, but why not give yourself as long as you can to develop a good roster? For the Texans at number two, there'll be a similar thought process in saying, give me a cheap quarterback for a long time and... In this case, it'll be C.J. Stroud, actually, who I did not realize is PFF's third quarterback. That's interesting. I don't totally disagree with it. I think you can go a number of ways with the quarterbacks this year, but give me the pro-ready guy that's done it for two years now. For number three, we have the first team that doesn't need a quarterback, and they are going to reap the benefits of that by getting Jalen Carter, who will really help fix the issue of them being squishy in the trenches, as he is great in run defense and also as a pass rusher. In a vacuum, I like the lottery ticket of Anthony Richardson more than Will Levis, but since they're going to start sooner than later... I'll take the more pro-ready Will Levis and trust others in their evaluation of him being the better prospect in general. For Seattle, they, like Arizona, have benefited from being in a good spot for the quarterback position because they can just take what the board gives them, and in Seattle's case, they need defensive line help and they get Will Anderson, who is as highly touted as can be for an edge rusher. I've heard some TJ Watt comparisons. I really like the pairing of Anthony Richardson and Detroit because Richardson can sit behind Goff and develop. There's also, I believe, Ben Johnson, the offensive coordinator for the Lions, who is a head coach candidate. He is a great person to learn behind, and so is Goff, really, even though Goff doesn't have a great reputation at this point. He is somebody that can show Richardson what it takes to be a pro, and Richardson can, if he can learn from Goff and really meet his athletic potential, he will be a complete monster. The board ends up working out pretty favorably for the Raiders here because they can get the number one corner on most people's board and Devon Witherspoon, who really could revitalize this defense that's in need of secondary help because he could be a true shutdown corner, which alleviates a lot of sins on the rest of their team building defensively. For Atlanta, they get... The answer to their issue of squishiness, and they get a great edge rusher here in Tyree Wilson, who I initially wasn't very high on, but have came around to because so many people I trust, such as PFF, are high on him. Next up for Carolina, they have good corners as is, but... I don't like that they had to have Jeremy Chin as a nickel corner, and we're going to alleviate that with Christian Gonzalez, who can play nickel, can also play outside, though, and he can play man, he can play zone, he can tackle. He's a great do-it-all corner. 
Despite having a top five wide receiver duo with Devonta Smith and AJ Brown, the Eagles need wide receiver. And though it is a little awkward to have so many outside guys, I think the pick should be Quentin Johnston just because he has a much higher athletic ceiling than Jackson Smith and Jigba does. And we also can feel a little more comfortable because he's done it. Johnston, that is, has done it from the outside as well as in the slot. So I think move Devonta Smith mainly to slot, but allow for some packages where Quentin Johnston is in there as a big slot. Tennessee is spoiled for choice because the positions they need most wide receiver and tackle are both available at this pick. And though they drastically need tackle, I favor wide receiver as a more valuable position in general. So that breaks the tie between these roughly equal prospects. For the Texans, they have an interesting choice because they're good at tackle. They do need defensive interior. They could go a couple of different ways here, but for me, I'm going to say get help in the secondary with Joey Porter Jr. Because at a minimum, he will be a great rotational guy. And even better is you can let go of Steven Nelson and free up some cap space that way and get younger in the process and hopefully improve with Joey Porter Jr. The Jets really need tackle help in the worst way because Mekhi Becton hasn't played for two years. And in addition to that, we don't know how good George Fant is because he went from having a career year two years ago to a bad year this past year that was riddled with injuries. So Peter Skarinski is definitely the pick here. We have the Patriots who are kind of in need of secondary help when you really think about it because they need an outside corner and a slot guy. And I don't really love any of the outside corners left right now, but I do like Brian Branch as a full-sized Mike Hilton. So I like him here for New England. Green Bay could be like me and fall for nostalgia with Miles Murphy, who resembles Rashawn Gary in the physical sense. He's ninth on the consensus board and 22nd on PFF's board. So he's pretty divisive on where people fall for him. For Washington, there's a need at corner. I don't know if Deontay Banks is truly the 18th best player, though. And what I like for them is Brian Brzee, who can fill in as a rotational guy now but then eventually take over for Deron Payne, who is on the franchise tag currently. I think Payne is really good, but I think Brzee could be about as good with the right development, and he can be a whole lot cheaper. The Steelers need offensive line help here, as evident by the tackle need, and fortunately for them, Paris Johnston, or Johnson rather is available and that's a good pick because you could really argue he could be in for Dan Moore or Chikuma Korafor. So he can fill in for either of those guys. Here the board was very kind to Detroit as Kalaja Kansi is PFF's number one ranked player still left on the board and he also fits the interior defensive line mold that they need, which is a guy that really can do anything, actually, because they need pass rushing help and run defense help. And early on, it'll likely just be pass rushing from Kansi, but he'll be doing that at a very high level that will play nicely off of a Liam McNeil who can 
defend the run pretty well on his own. After releasing Donovan Smith, the Buccaneers are really in need of a tackle opposite Tristan Wirfs, and I think Broderick Jones is the guy for that, because this team is still pretty good talent-wise. I wouldn't say they're going to be a great spot to land a young quarterback eventually, and I don't think they're contending right away, but... They have some pieces in place, so I would just keep that in mind when I draft Broderick Jones, who is, I think, a bit closer to starting, albeit he's played very limited amounts of reps so far. I think Anton Harrison is a reasonable pick as well, but he's just a little harder to project given his weaker physique. Seattle's going to get a bit of a steal here with Lucas Van Ness. And what I really like about him is he'll go into the interior for them for much of the time. But when Nuosu and Will Anderson need breathers, he could be an edge guy as well. So he's a very nice chess piece to have. This may be a bit of a hot take, but I think the Chargers take Jordan Addison and hope that he can learn behind Keenan Allen to be a similar type of player. Both are kind of tall, not very fast, not super physical, but they can be great route runners and great receivers. Baltimore could go Deontay Banks here because they may be losing Marcus Peters, but I think the best pick is, say, Flowers because... Regardless of if you have Lamar or not, you're going to need some type of passing attack. Right now, Zay Flowers could step in and be their number one wide receiver. Deontay Banks would be a great pickup for the Vikings because who doesn't like taking swings on super freak athletes at the corner position? And also, if they bring back Patrick Peterson... They'll have a great mentor in place to help improve with Banks' press technique, which is a bit of an issue right now, but could be a major strength. I think Nolan Smith is the pick for the Jags here because Trayvon Walker could make the transition to defensive tackle. He is so freakishly athletic. He could be basically the next Aaron Donald athlete at defensive tackle. And Caleb Von Chason is just not it. So that means Nolan Smith could be coming off the edge. And that would just be such a formidable pass rush and also an underrated run defense as well with Josh Allen being the leader of it, but Nolan Smith and Trayvon Walker being more than capable as well. Dalton Kincaid is uniquely set up to fix both the Giants' issues at wide receiver and tight end, as he is a tight end in name pretty much alone, as he is really just a big slot. But what he can do in that role is great as a route runner, and he is still a tight end with his aggressiveness towards the ball. And he tries really hard as a run blocker as well, even if he's not great at it. He's not a glaring issue there. I like Michael Mayer to Dallas because tight end is a need for them, as is wide receiver. So you can't be too deficient in your skill position talent pool, which is weird to say since they do have C.D. Lamb and Michael Gallup. They just don't have much beyond that at least not that you can feel comfortable with and also pff's comparison for michael mayer is jason witten so i feel like that's pretty perfect too anton harrison to buffalo is pretty perfect because he's pff's best player available and his only real issue is that he's not much of a run blocker but buffalo doesn't really run anyways and when they do it's with josh allen which is a bit easier on a tackle than it is just straight up beating your guy. So I like Anton Harrison, and I think he'll be a clear upgrade 
as a pass protector day one for them. PFF kind of hates this one, but for Cincy, I'm going to Cyrus Torrance, who is quite similar to Zion Johnson last year. Just a plug in starting guard right away that is a full size man. It's a match made in heaven for Cam Smith and the Saints because the Saints really need a corner and Cam Smith fits their build of elite athletes at the position. And in addition to that, he really has shown high end talent as I think last year was his best year, but either way, he's been good for multiple years and is that good athlete they look for. If you're the Eagles, sure you need cornerback help, but are you really going to turn down Bijan Robinson with your second pick, giving you just a complete offense full of nothing but superstars? I think that has to be the move here. The Chiefs currently have no starting tackles on their roster, but we're going to fix that with Dewan Jones, who is the perfect scheme fit for their gap scheme, and will lock down the right side of their offensive line. Hopefully, he'll be paired with Orlando Brown as well, giving them just an entirely ginormous offensive line. So that's my mock draft. Let me know what you think, and also please be sure to like and subscribe.